Hello everyone. Today I am going to be talking through this automated Gantt chart in Google Sheets. Um, it's also available in Excel as well, so feel free to follow along either in Google Sheets or Excel. If you've already purchased this template from me for my Etsy business, thank you so much for your order. I really appreciate it. And if you haven't purchased it, but you are looking for an automated Gantt chart to track your projects for work or personal projects, I'm going to include the link to the template in my Etsy store um, and feel free to purchase it to follow along as well. Um, and today I'm going to be using the Google Sheets version, but if you're using Excel, that's totally fine. Feel free to follow along there. All of the formulas and functionality that I'm going to be walking through in Google Sheets is going to look the same in Excel, so it'll be a, a streamlined experience for you as well. Um, so just jumping in, uh, let's get started here. In the Gantt chart, uh, Google Sheets, you are in Excel, you're going to have um, access to two tabs at the bottom. The first tab is going to be the streamlined view. And that's basically going to be a Gantt chart with um, just less columns, less details on it, so you can really just see where your project is at all times. And then the detailed view is going to have the same features and functionalities. However, it's going to have a couple additional columns, so you can just gather some additional details for each task if that's helpful. So feel free to use whichever tab works best for your team. Or sometimes people use the detailed view for some projects and then the streamlined view for other projects, and that works too. <laughs> so just jumping back to the streamlined view at the top here, just getting started, feel free to rename it. At the top, you can just go ahead and type in anything right here. Feel free to add a project title and your project manager's name. And then for the project start date, just make sure that this is the earliest date that any of your tasks below start. Um, so you're gonna wanna make sure that it's either equal to your earliest task or even before that. And then your project end date is going to be the opposite. So it's going to be the, the last day that any task would end for the project. Um, up here, feel free to throw in your company name. Today's date is automatically going to populate for you. Um, the days left to complete is, all, is actually also going to automatically populate for you. The reason this one's negative is because today's date is August 1st and the project was supposed to end on February 28th. So this would be a, a past project. Uh, but for today's example, yours will most likely be in the positive. Um, and just jump it in down here. The Gantt chart is broken into different project phases. I have five in here for you. They're all color coordinated. And then each task that you see in here is corresponding with the project phase. So what's neat about this is you can kind of come in here and easily rename these to whatever makes sense for your project. And then for each task, you can come in here and type in details about your task. If you need just a little bit more space and you don't want it to wrap like it's doing right now, you can come up to column G and then just simply drag the width to expand that a little bit. And then to activate the automated Gantt chart, this is where your start and end date come in. So for here, I'm just gonna show you an example just to get started here. I'm gonna change that to 1.7. And then over here, you're gonna see how it automatically pulled in some additional color blocks. And then here, I'm gonna change this to 1.7 and you're gonna see how it shrunk the color blocks. So all of that's automatic. There's nothing you need to do there. Um, just go ahead and start populating all of your start and end dates for your tasks. The number of days that it takes you to complete each task automatically calculates. And then over here, um, all the colors match each project phase, which is really neat. Um, and one thing up here that I will note, so where it says project week and it says one, this means which week of the project you're on. So in this case, you're at the very beginning, so you're seeing January 2nd. But say you're a little bit further in the project and you want to see that week, you can come into this drop down menu. And let's say you want to start with project week three of your project, it'll automatically just focus to what tasks are happening that week, as opposed to showing you what you've already completed. So this is really helpful too, especially for larger projects that you don't want to see everything you've already done. You just want to focus on what's to do going forward. Um, one question I get quite a bit, and I want to walk through this with everyone, is what do I do if I want to delete a couple tasks? So for this, for this example, in case you don't have all of these tasks um, for phase one, and let me just change this to phase one. Say you don't have all of these tasks, what I would recommend doing is deleting a row, and I just want to show you how to do that. So you are going to come in here, and you're going to click on the row above the last row in the project phase. So you're gonna click, in this case, it's gonna be row 19. You're gonna right click and you're gonna click on delete row. You don't wanna delete the last row and you don't wanna delete the first row. You basically wanna delete what's in between all of that and that won't jeopardize any of the formulas that are going on behind the scenes for you. And I'm just gonna change this back to one just so you can see the blue uh, for today's 
day in sync as well. There we go. Um, but now say you have the opposite. So say you want to come in here and add another task. We don't have enough tasks on here. What you're going to do is you're going to click on the very last row, the last task in your project phase, and you're going to right click and you're going to say insert one row above. It's really important to click above, not below, because above is going to keep it in the blue. Below would actually add it to the green. So you want to keep it in the blue up here. And then just so this populates right now, you see that it's just a blank row. Come up to the row above that. So this would be row 18. And you're just going to select G18 and kind of drag your mouse all the way through K18. And then you'll see this little circle in the corner right here. Put your mouse right over that until you see this, this cross or plus sign appear. And then you're just going to drag that down. And that's going to basically grab all of the formulas and copy everything for you behind the scenes. And then again, you can come in here and rename it and change the dates and, and whatnot, but it'll activate the Gantt chart as well for you. So hopping over to the other detailed view, the second tab at the bottom of your Gantt chart, this is going to be the same features and functionality, but it's going to have a couple other columns for you just to be able to gather some additional information about the project. So everything up here is basically the same. Feel free to come in here and populate some of this. The percent complete automatically calculates for you and the percent incomplete does the same. So no need to, to mess with either of those numbers right there. The project start date, you are going to want to fill that in on this sheet as well. It does not pull from the other sheet, so make sure to, to populate that here as well. And then you also have the same functionality um, for the project week, and that functions the same as it does on the other tab here too. Um, a couple things that are different, you're going to see a task number column over here. This is going to be if you have tasks that are associated with each other, you can kind of number them to, to make sure that you or the people that you are working with know that they're related. That's how a lot of teams use that. You can come in here and again, rename each project phase. Then you can also come in here and just type in, um, you know, what your task is as well. And then you can also add a task owner. So say you're working on a project with a bunch of different people and you want to keep straight which task is assigned to who on your team, feel free to add in their names in this column. The start and end date um, are going to be the same. The days are going to automatically calculate for you. And then over here, this is going to be the percent of the task that you have completed. So this could range from zero, and you see how that changes to white, or as you increase in percentages, you're gonna see the, the more complete the task is, so the closer to 100% this, this number is, the greener it gets. The closer to zero it gets, the whiter it gets. So you'll, you'll kind of see that this gradient is automatically activated. And that's just a nice visual representation of where you're at with the project. And that's, that's nice for people to come in here and just kind of see where you're at with each task. Um, adding and deleting rows are going to function the exact same way that I showed you on the streamlined view. Again, if you want to delete a row, you're going to come in here to the middle and just select one and then click delete row. And then if you want to add a row, um, add a task, essentially, you're going to select the last task in your project phase. You're going to right click and you're going to go insert one row above. And then again, you would highlight essentially everything above that row that you just inserted and you would copy it down using the same functionality we did on the other sheet. And that's going to copy through those formulas and activate the Gantt chart as well. Um, the last thing I will say, this little chart up here too, this automatically calculates for you as well. It's a really good visual representation of incomplete versus complete. So those are the Gantt charts. Um, I hope that this is really helpful for your projects, uh, whether that's a project for work, a project for you know, personal use. I hope that this really helps you accomplish everything you're looking to do. And again, if you've already uh, purchased this, thank you so much for your order. And if you are looking um, for something that would help you, I'll have that link in the bottom of the comments here. Feel free to, to check it out. And I hope this helps. So thank you all for tuning in and I will see you in the next video.